My name is Belinda Medlin. I'm a professor at the Hawkesbury Institute for the Environment at Western Sydney University. Um, I started out uh, with a mathematics background, um, so uh, my PhD was actually in theoretical ecology. Um, but since then I've gradually been working with more and more and more physiologists and experimentalists. So I've kind of um, imbibed their approaches to work until I think I've gotten to the stage where the other modelers no longer think of me as a modeler, I'm more of a physiologist. Um, so really what I'm trying to do in my work is to cross that interface between experiments and models um, and try and develop ways to represent vegetation um, that's really based on experimental evidence. What inspired my interest in plant science? It actually took a long time to come. Um, so I grew up in suburban Adelaide in South Australia, which is really not the place to get interested in plant science. There's, you know, there's very little plants, there's very little native vegetation left, it's dry. Um, so I really, I really didn't think much about plants uh, until uh, when I was 19. I had some friends in the Adelaide University Mountain Club who took me bushwalking for the first time. Um, and so, you know, the first, the first walk was in Glenelg River uh, in uh, Victoria, and it was just beautiful. And it just, you know, it just changed my life, really. I think really the biggest question in my field, or at least in, you know, in my personal head at the moment, is trying to understand um, how to scale up carbon and nutrient cycles um, to the ecosystem scale. So we can measure parts of those cycles um, very well. So, you know, we've quantified photosynthesis, respiration, um, nutrient uptake, but to try and put that all together into a big picture so that it's consistent with what we see at the ecosystem scale um, is, is the real challenge. How do I think that my research benefits society? I have to say, I don't think it does quite yet. And the reason I think it doesn't yet is because I think that we're still um, trying to get all those little pieces of the puzzle together. Once we fit them together, we should be able to say something um, really important about vulnerability of ecosystems to climate change, which is really where I want to head with our research. Um, ultimately what I want to be able to do is to say something about Australian ecosystems in particular but ecosystems in general to say look this ecosystem you know this is this is uh, what limits it um, this is where it might be headed under you know under global change um, and if we can say that if we can really make evidence-based projections for what's happening with our ecosystems then that should be really um, highly valuable to society. So where, for example, where I live at the moment, it's in the Blue Mountains, just outside of Sydney. Um, it's a really beautiful ecosystem, um, amazing different sorts of trees. Um, and I look, I really do, I look at them every day and I think, what's going to happen? Where is this headed? You know, is it going to be just fine? Or are we looking at um, major bushfire problems, major drought problems, major changes of the ecosystem down the track? And that's what I really want to be able to say. I just can't quite say it yet. Um, hopefully I will get there before, you know, before my career finishes. I would have loved to have had a female role model uh, when I was first starting out uh, in this area, but certainly when I started out, and still today, there really aren't that many female modelers. Um, the only ones that I could really think of who were around uh, when I was a, a younger student um, were people like Susanna von Kammerer um, and Anarchy Makala. Um, and I know, you know, I didn't know them terribly well, so I didn't know them well enough that they could actually be a role model. Um, so I have to say that the role models that I do have um, don't really look anything like me, um, but I would nominate um, my PhD supervisor, Ross McMurtry, um, and actually my co-editor, Rich Norby, um, because I think, you know, when I, when I think about who I want to be, I really want to be, um, I, want to ha I want to share their qualities of being really good scientists, um, really concerned about getting the science right, but at the same time really um, concerned about the people that you work with um, and enjoying working with other people. There's lots of things that I really love about my job. Um, 
I love the fact that I get to think about plants all the time. I love the challenge of trying to put everything together. It's really, you know, it's really mentally stimulating. Um, I love the people that I work with, um, but I have to say that my very favorite thing about my job is actually our journal club. So we run this journal club, we sit down once a week, we've all read or not read, or at least, you know, scanned this one particular paper and we sit down, we pull it to pieces, um, we see how the science works, we have a great laugh, we have some biscuits. Um, there are, you know, we've been running this for several years now. Um, uh, it fell away when I was uh, moving institutions and I really missed it. And now we're doing it again and it really is, it's great fun. It's the best thing. You have to have a journal club. My least favourite thing about my job is probably most people's least favourite thing about this job, which is just having to deal with rejection. So, um, you know, your, your, your grant proposals, most of the time they're not going to get funded, your papers, most of the time they're going to get rejected first off. And that's, you know, it is really hard to deal with. Um, uh, it's just a question of, you know, shutting yourself in your room for a few hours and uh, and just then picking yourself up and keeping on going and you know you learn how to do that but it's not anyone's favorite part of their job that part and the advice I would give to early career researchers the first thing is that you really need to get on top of data data management programming manipulating data using statistics using models they um, really, really important skills and going into the future they're only going to be more important and, and I think as an early career researcher that you know the first thing you have to do is, is get as many of those skills as you possibly can. It's always going to stand you in good stead. Um, and so, and, but the other thing that I would say to early career researchers is, um, is, is, is not to spend too much time in your job. So a lot of people work all the time on their research and feel like they're obliged to do that. Um, but my opinion is that the, um, the creativity that you need to do really good science isn't going to come if you're spending all your life doing that and not doing anything else. So I think that it's really important, even, like, even when you're writing up your PhD, to have one day off a week where you go and do something else and see something else um, and then you can come back with a fresh mind to approach those problems again. But science is, um, it is a creative process. I don't think people realise from the outside how much creativity there is in science. Um, it, you need to be able to come with a, with a new and fresh approach to thinking about, about questions. And that doesn't come if you spend all day embedded in them, in my opinion. Um, so in my case, um, when I'm not at work, I'm generally I'm doing I'm doing one of three things. I'm looking after my kids, so you'll find me at a piano lesson or a you know gymnastics class or something. Um, uh, you'll find me in my library reading my books, um, or else you'll find me in my backyard just wandering around. So we have a bush backyard um, and a big vegetable patch. So if I'm not in the vegetable patch, I'm generally down the hill in the bush um, looking at plants.